what we're really looking at is monitoring systems and test equipment, be it the IPEC equipment or, or other type of equipment, different shapes and sizes from spot testing to permanent monitoring system. But what are the sort of tools and techniques that are inbuilt in these equipment often, or what, are, what tools and techniques are very useful in order to transition from that sort of first level detection to taking useful action on your assets. So there are many different ways that, that you can view and analyze PD data, but broadly what I've done here now is I've split them into two categories. One is about the detection of PD, and one is about the interpretation and action of PD as well. But it is important that we must consider the limitation of the tools we have. So although I'm sort of covering a number of topics here, not all tools will have all the different functions. And so it's important to really understand the equipment you have. Maybe you need um, two or three different types of equipment to make a sort of nice asset management program and a nice process um, to make sure you can sort of follow through the steps to take to get useful action at the end of it, if you like. OK, so the next one is um, categorization. And what I mean by this, so this is the first of our sort of more advanced analysis. And this is now where it comes into. So if you imagine the first detection of PD helped you identify where your problems may be in your network. This next one is really looking into the detail of how, how we can then do our further investigation heading towards a point of repair. So the first thing you want to do is, is categorization. So we've got PD being detected by our, our monitoring system, by different sensors. We may also be detecting multiple PD activity. We may be detecting PD from multiple assets, cable or switch gear. And basically, we'll want to do further analysis to find out where our PD may be. So there are a few different ways. And actually, this list is a little bit longer than what I've put on this slide. These are the sort of first, the, the key ones. So the first one is wave shape. So like I said, we have the ability to look at the individual wave shape and how the wave shape pattern of PD occurs gives us an indication of where the PD may be relative to the sensor and relative to the asset. So on the right hand side here, this is an example. On the top, this is a PD coming from a few hundred meters down a cable. And on the bottom, this is a PD coming from the switch gear next to the sensor. So as we know, when a PD occurs, the frequency of the PD um, as, a, as, a, as the signal, uh, the PD signal propagates away from the PD source, the frequency characteristics will change. If it's a switchgear PD and we're detecting it locally, that's going to remain a relatively high frequency signal. And we can see that on this image at the bottom here, which is a switchgear PD, a very fast pulse that subsides very quickly, attenuates very quickly, and we can see it there. A PD that's traveled along the cable, the high frequency components disappear and the lower frequency components um, take more prominence. So that's why we see this sort of much slower, much lower frequency and much slower PD segment up here. So looking at the individual wave shape gives an, it give, can give us an indication as to where the PD source may be relative to the sensor type. So that's the first step. The other thing we can then do is clustering. This is when we're seeing an, uh, two PDs on one um, asset. So if you like, it helps with this wave shape analysis. It helps separate these PDs. You can have systems, tools, techniques, um, automatic algorithms. So this is built into our permanent monitoring system. Is If you look at this top chart here, the PRPD is, is um, very busy, but actually there's two PD sources in there. And running it through the clustering algorithm, the output of the below here, we can see two different PDs. So detected by one sensor, we're detecting two PDs. And so the top one is much more of like, like we've talked about one of these cable PDs coming from further away. And the bottom one is much more typical of a switchgear PD, a PD occurring locally. So taking into account the individual wave shapes of PD helps with categorization. And we can have tools and techniques to do that, such as clustering, whereby the monitoring system or the test equipment automatically conducts that analysis for you. Then finally, PRPD. PRPD patterns can also tell us about the defect type. PRPD comes in two methods, two ways, if you like. One is uh, sort of a flat PRPD, which is just the PD level against the angle in the power cycle. And the other one is sort of a, um, a PRPD with depth that we often call a heat map, which is the level against the angle and then with the depth based on how many PDs are occurring. 
So you can just about see in this in this PD pattern here, some darker points, some points going to red, which is where we see more PD activity occurring. And if you've got one of these PRPD patterns with, with depth, it makes it really useful for um, understanding the defect type. There's guidelines um, out there for typical PD patterns. So if you're looking at PRPD pattern from a particular sensor, typical guidelines can give you an indication as to whether the PD is external, whether the PD is internal. This is very, uh, very well known on sort of GIS, for example, whether it's a floating particle, um, but protruding point or a defect inside the insulation, for example, they all would have different PD patterns. Um, and indeed, some PD patterns can give you an indication of where the defects may be and therefore can make you less worried about that PD as well. So all these tools can be used and combined to sort of categorize and, and quantify our PD and help us move on to the next step of, of which PDs we then want to investigate. So the next one is PD location. And like I said, even lots of people may think that you only conduct PD location if you're ready to take action, if you want to repair the PD. But that is not the IPEC philosophy, and that's not the recommendation. We recommend, if possible, to locate PD whenever you can, you can do so. The reason is that PD activity, like I said, unless we know the source of the PD, unless we know the PD location, we don't know how far that PD has traveled until it's reached the sensor. So we don't know how far the signal has attenuated. Additionally, we don't know where the PD is coming from, so we don't know if it's coming from an asset that would be very concerning. So if the PD, for example, is um, actually a source of the PD is corona and it's ionizing the air, that's not very concerning. But if the PD is maybe contamination on a, on a bushing and on an insulator, on a critical component, even if it's a lower level, that would be very concerning. So we do recommend where possible to locate all PDs so that you can take swift action. If not now, you can have it ready to take swift action in the future. And of course, some of the dedicated presentations I did a few weeks ago, I did dedicated presentations on how we locate on cables and also how we locate on switchgear. So if you go back to the previous presentations I've done on cable and switchgear PD, that'll be very useful to, uh, to watch and useful to, to join. Finally, I'll just give a brief overview of, of sort of other tools. Um, and then after this, I want to just quickly jump and spend five minutes on the data interface showing how we combine these tools together. First thing to know is that there are, there are lots of different methods and further analysis that you can do. There's lots of ways that you can analyze PD and look at PD relative to other conditions or, or, or even conducting the sort of location function. A common one is looking at PD against temperature and humidity because certain PDs can be affected by humidity and temperature changes. That temperature change could be caused by the load. It could also be caused by the external environment. And then there you go on the chart below. That's why it's nice also to look at PD and load. So you can import load information. So we can see here there's a perfect um, pattern of PD and load. As the load increases, the PD is increasing um, in this chart as well. So PD and load, understanding the comparison between those two. Um, other things we have is single-ended mapping, for example. So I just touched on PD location and how that technique is used, but there's other tools such as being able to do a PD location um, from your office without going to site. So the monitoring system can conduct PD location as well by mapping from a single end of the cable. So lots of different tools and techniques, um, other charts and graphs, polar charts, polar graphs, different ways to view PRPDs, for example, uh, that we like to use polar, polar graphs, and I'll show you in a moment as well. So basically there's a whole host of tools and techniques out there depending on the, the assets you're looking at, depending on how advanced you want to go with, with PD activity as well. 